Welcome to GUI and in web browsers for 12th of February 2020. Um, this week, we have some items on agenda. And for some reason, I'm always first. So maybe let's shuffle this a little bit this week. And Jacob, can you go first? Outrageous. All right. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to briefly talk about um, DNS over HTTPS. So we have, we need to start, we need to get this implemented because right now in JS, we don't handle resolution of DNS adder, multi adders. Uh, this creates a problem for like our gateway nodes and anybody else who wants to uh, use DNS entries and get text records back. So we're going to be working on um, implementing resolvers for libp2p. Um, I synced up with Hugo earlier. The one I'm going to do is based off what we talked about in the prior art for JSIPFS for IPNS over DNS. I'm going to work on creating a um, a gist for describing how this will work, but the basic idea is that for JSLibP2P, you'd be able to provide a map of resolvers, and then those resolvers would be configurable. Um, and then we'll just start out right now with a small resolver for handling the DNS adders, because that's what we have the highest priority for right now. Um, but that will let us handle resolvables. So then JSLibP2P will store, will still store the DNS adder associated with the peer. And then when we need to um, do dials or any lookups on the multi-adder, we can do the resolution with the DNS cache based on the, the TTL. So I'm going to be working on that um, at the end of this week and then get a just a proposal shared out for how that will work and how that will look like for configuring libp2p. Uh, but the idea is that libp2p will also come with defaults for that so people don't have to worry about creating resolvers for that. Uh, so uh, the, the only question I have at this stage is uh, sort of like a background for folks who are not familiar with uh, the question and clarification. <laughs> Um, uh, there's an issue with sort of like more detailed background in case anyone is interested. Uh, it's on the JS IPFS, but we, just like Jacob said, uh, we need to uh, probably tackle DNS other first in lib 2 b uh, Probably the way it will work, I think, when uh, someone will initialize JS IPFS, we will would pass that configuration uh, to lip 2 p I mean, if, if someone wants to use custom DNS resolver, let's say DNS over HTTPS at some service provider, probably it would look, the way it would look in the end, it would look like in JS IPFS, it would be um, like passing that to a constructor and then internally uh, JS IPFS would pass that to lip 2 p Is that more or less the plan? Yeah, yeah. So we'll be doing everything, everything up to where JS IPFS. I look briefly at the issue, um, and I'll make sure to go over that before finalizing the proposal. But it looks like the HTTP resolvers were more specifically towards the um, the hosts of the resolvers, um, and then for for JS IPFS, it would likely just be instantiating. If it needed to override, it would be instantiating. Um, the the certain resolvers that lib p2p will use um, because it may in theory people can provide resolvers for whatever and it might not just be http resolvers um, but that will be the thing that we're focused on first because we have a very specific use cases we need to solve for that yep totally super cool make sure to cc me when the proposal is more or less yeah yeah we'll do super cool um all right, the next one is uh, what async refactor, the recent refactor of uh, lip2p and uh, JS uh, IPFS means for our user facing applications, namely uh, IPFS companion, uh, web UI, and desktop. Uh, some folks asked me that multiple times, so I still 
make sense to uh, quickly go over them uh, and mention. Uh, I had all pages preloaded before I rebooted my laptop. So <laughs> um, from IPFS com companion perspective, uh, we use internally both uh, JS IPFS full node. Uh, we also run uh, JS IPFS HTTP client. So user can pick between external and embedded node. Um, and in Brave, we also use, like, we make a more extensive use of embedded JS IPFS where we provide custom lib P2P uh, config and modules uh, for things like TCP transport and uh, more, like, more closely tailored uh, version of embedded JS IPFS for that uh, Brave environment. And in all those uh, touch points, we will have to basically uh, probably uh, do slight refactor of IPFS companion code. That's why I did not work on companion for some time, mostly waiting for stuff to settle down uh, around uh, IPFS, waiting for the next release of uh, JS IPFS, and uh, also waiting for a uh, signaling solution, because uh, that embedded node is right now relying on WebSocket star. Um, at least in Brave. So unless we have uh, either that WebRTC one or Stardust ready, uh, companion is sort of like uh, blocked uh, and we are not able to switch to the newer version. Um, yep, that's um, the topic of embedded JSAPFS in Brave. It's a separate, so, so, separate set of uh, challenges, uh, namely some APIs, uh, Chromium apps, uh, APIs are being deprecated by Google, which gives us like a soft window until 2022 to figure it out uh, uh, next steps for Brave. Uh, but that's like separate uh, branch of work. Uh, on the IPFS web UI, which is our dashboard uh, interface for, and it's shipped with Go IPFS, with JS IPFS, with IPFS Companion, and also with IPFS Desktop. So this dashboard is either bundled with or is open from IPFS by those uh, projects. And it's basically uh, web apps in React, which connects to IPFS HTTP API over, <laughs> to IPFS API over HTTP client, which also goes refactored and uh, will need uh, someone to invest some time uh, to go over all the users touch points with our API and uh, refactor that to the new API. And for IPFS desktop, the surface, it looks similar, similar to IPFS web UI, this is an Electron app. Uh, however, it does not have as many touch points with uh, IPA, a, a JS IPFS HTTP client uh, programmatic interface. Uh, it's mostly like just checks if notice app and for everything else it opens web UI. However, in all those uh, uh, GUI applications, we are still using the old um, callbacks and promises based uh, API before the, this refactor which introduced some breaking changes. So uh, be patient, we will get to that eventually, but I feel we uh, want to take it slow um, especially given that in uh, IPFS web UI, we got end-to-end -end tests, which I started working uh, today to make sure they work with both old and new uh, programmatic interface from the JS uh, uh, side of things. So that would enable us to sort of run those end-to-end -end tests as we are transitioning both like web UI, but also um, uh, Go IPFS, JS IPFS, which also will run those end-to-end -end tests and handle the situation when we have uh, like one part front-end or back-end uh, on of those end-to-end -end tests uh, being uh, using the new API and maybe the demon is the old one. Um, so that's more or less the, the current situation and uh, high-level overview of where we are with those uh, with those refactors. Um, I believe that's it from me. Uh, 
I want yeah, just to say one thing regarding the Stardust since you mentioned it. Uh, so basically, I've been pushing forward with it in the last couple of days, and uh, now I got to the uh, the PR finally ready for our initial review. So basically, there are uh, some things to eventually polish regarding the the encryption because uh, the initial version of Stardust was not uh, using Sekio, and now with the current dollar, uh, I'm using it. It's working, but it's using the Sekio uh, encryption, which we may not want to use. We are we are still uh, uh, discussing if it should go with it or not. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope that we can uh, get it merged next week. And uh, after getting it merged, basically we will also need we'll need to deploy the Stardust new version of the server. And uh, hopefully after that, the Stardust will be ready to be used. And that's it. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, we will probably need more than one. <laughs> I would I would feel much better if we had like two or three, <laughs> just to uh, just to uh, from the get go when someone learns about Stardust and like if signal, uh, this temporary solution of uh, signaling servers, if, uh, like in every example and places like that, people should see like more than one just to have that at the back of their head, uh, a good habit to have uh, redundancy. Otherwise, uh, I, I'm not sure what will be the default. I believe the current default in uh, like the default bundle of JSIPFS is to fail. If no uh, like web, WebSocket star servers are available. Um, that so won't be the case, I think with the refactor. I need to double check though. But our dialing logic is, our listening logic is different than it used to be um, before the refactor. So now we don't just like dump the addresses, we take it, we're more selective and we spin up listeners for each address. So we allow listeners to fail, um, but it could be possible if we I need to check. Um, but that's also should be relatively easy to, configure if we want to do an update to JSWDP to allow like, okay, if WebSockets are listening is failing, let's not not fail outright, let's allow that failure. Um, but we may not want to, like right now, it if all WebSocket star addresses fail, it will fail. Yeah, uh, in I touched upon that uh, around the work done for Brave. So in Brave, I changed, because the module for uh, like WebSocket Star, uh, WebSocket Star Multi, it enabled uh, a mode when you could allow failing of all of them, I believe. Uh, so I flipped the flag, flipped the default for Brave. So even if our signaling server is uh, down, uh, the node would still boot. Um, that's probably like safer default. Uh, otherwise, like people may get a sur surprise that sometimes nothing works instead of just like a subset of connectivity. Um, cool, 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 cool. Um, yep. Uh, Hugo, do you want to show us something maybe? What? I've been, I feel that you want to show us something. You want me to show it? Jacob already seen it. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, right. Okay, so I've been working on uh, basically a, a test runner based on Playwright. Playwright is basically the Puppeteer 2.0 that supports Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox. Um, uh, and I wanna, I wanted, I wanted to run tests in the browser, but not use Karma because it's awful. So I tried to 
make it work with Playwright and it turns out it's super simple and it allows for some extra nice things that we couldn't or would be hard to do with Karma. Um, so you guys are seeing my screen, right? Yes. So simple stuff, run the tests, some console logs. This basically um, bundles everything with, uh, with Webpack. Um, does a little setup necessary for uh, Mocha. Um, spawns the browser you want, injects everything, and redirects the, the output to, to the console. So basically, one of, one of the nice things here is that we get the same output that we get from Karma, from Mocha. So we, we look at the same type of format and formatting, highlighting, everything is the same because it actually comes from the same place. Um, this is basically Mocha running in the, um, in the browser. Uh, also, the source marks are a, li a little bit better than the ones we get um, from Karma. You can actually jump to the correct line. We get the nice diffs. Uh, we get everything the same way we would have if we were to run Mocha in a node environment. Um, one other nice, nice thing is the, um, the debug mode, which is a little bit stabler, let's call it that, um, than Karma's. So we can debug everything, we can look at uh, and handle exceptions and caught errors and stuff like that with dev tools and debug everything. Um, and with this way, the, the browser window um, is kept open. We even get the, the fav icon from Mocha. Another thing is that you can run um, this stuff inside the um, a web worker. Uh, I don't remember the uh, mode. Okay, so run with more worker mode. The tests are run inside the, um, so basically you see here the worker running and everything is run inside of this uh, worker. The same way we have uh, right now with Karma. So new stuff that we don't have right now is the ability to run uh, in incognito mode. So you get a new window, you can check here, this is incognito and everything runs the same way. You can click here and you get the file, the correct file, you can debug it directly here. Um, so another thing that it's new and Lidl loves it is the, um, we can also run it in extension mode. And the extension mode has a new feature. It uh, is actually really useful. Like an hour ago, I made this. It automatically opens the dev tools for the background page. The background page is basically the environment um, that the extension runs. Uh, and this is useful because if without this, it's kind of troublesome. You need to get to, to here, click here, and then enable developer mode to get this nice link and to get finally to the stuff you want, which is a, a dev tools for the correct environment. And now it's automatic. Uh, so basically, I'm using the the playwrights, and I'm simulating clicks here, clicks here, and redirecting to this page. 
but for the end user, everything is automatic and easy. So yeah, that's it. Uh, one other thing that this can already do is run tape tests. Right now, it just doesn't know how, when to hand end the the process, so it keeps everything open, and you, you need to force close it. But I'm working on it. But it already runs because tape doesn't need anything in its setup. It just we just need to bundle everything, um, so it's it's able to run with the Mocha environment, and I'm already doing the 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 tape runner here without the mocha stuff but even in the mocha environment everything runs and you get the errors you get the the source maps and the same output you would get for running tape uh, in another environment yeah that's it hopefully i can get this all wrapped up and cleaned up um and use it start using it and if we don't i don't find any major issues maybe incorporated in Asia and finally remove karma. But I still need to figure out how to not force everyone to download a million times Playwright because it's big. It downloads three different browsers. And I'm still uh, researching a little bit how can I make it easier on, uh, on everyone's laptops and hard disks or SSDs and stuff like that, but I don't know. I'll figure a solution. I'll figure out a solution because right now we already have Electron inside Azure. If I add this, it's going to be pretty huge. Um, either we make every every repo into a mono repo and we only need it once, or I need to figure out a solution. Yeah, that's it. Hope you like it. I like it. <laughs> Uh, it's super cool because uh, both though, both incognito, even though it may sound weird why incognito matters, uh, more and more uh, additional code surface in browser browser vendors lands for incognito mode, mostly around like tracking, like websites uh, detecting, like websites detecting that you are running incognito or websites uh, detecting you are running like ad blocker, stuff like that. So even though those are both, even if incognito is like regular DOM context, it may like behavior may be on the edge cases uh, uh, on some like fringe APIs may be different. And we tend to use those fringe APIs in our uh, stack. So uh, it's pretty good to have a, it's out of the box, like part of the test suit. And for browser extension, it's pretty time consuming. As you could see, uh, it takes like five clicks just to get to the console. And in Chromium, there, as, as far as I know, there were there is no like sh shortcut. In Firefox, you can do that. However, like like eight over eighty percent of uh, desktop users and uh, com like companion users, I think that most of users are on Chrome, uh, so it uh, makes stuff much much easier. And also the browser extension context. It right now it's a regular web page like with DOM on, and additional API web extension APIs on top of that. However, behavior or around some things uh, may be different. And having that super easy way of running tests and uh, like checking if uh, we don't hit any like hard coded limitations of those co those contexts uh, will be super useful going forward. Um, I think we talked uh, like privately on that, but the overall plan is more or less for those changes to land in Azure, right? Either as a dependency or an option, just for yeah. Um, I, I just need to figure out the 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 the, the downloads. Part because I don't want to uh, increase Azure with Playwright. It's it's already too big, uh, and this one, even though it has some nice stuff in it, and it's so simple and stable and it's so much better, but it's too big because we we basically install Azure everywhere in every repo, and we have a bunch of repos in our computers. 
So yeah, I need to figure out a way to um, to ease the, the, that transition. But yeah, and uh, I just need to figure out that part. But you can still we can use it um, like installed globally and stuff like that. I'll probably ask some of you to test it out and see if it has uh, any issues. Uh, I already tested it in our repos. Um, and it runs the tests normally, so yeah, we'll see. Awesome. Oh, and and it also has a watch mode uh, that basically spawns new tab new tabs in, instead of just reloading, which is a little bit safer than uh, than just reloading the the page. Cool, cool. Um... Does anyone have any additional agenda items? Because I can add one ad hoc. <laughs> um, I've been uh, working on uh, like redoing docs for the subdomain feature. Uh, and just like a sneak peek, uh, the overall documentation of the config file got changed uh, recently. And I made the gateway section conform to that. Uh, it's not in the master yet, because uh, it will land with the subdomain feature. However, now uh, it's much easier to like hot link to each uh, each part of the gateway section. And we got this like global toggle for, we will have when it PR runs, uh, for uh, disabling DNS link lookup global, globally based on the host header. So other people, may point their IPs, uh, their domain names at your IP. Uh, so some, some people may want to disable that behavior. And then this new path prefixes section, uh, which now will have more substantial examples. So uh, for example, here, like each parameter has an example with uh, some additional context. And then up here we have two frames, which are free. The repair is used for getting a number. Thank you. I see breaking up a lot for everybody else. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're super broken out, Lido. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you're speaking at 56K. Let me try something now. Good. Hey, good. You, yeah, it's better. Is, is it better? Oh. Yeah, I realized I unplugged my laptop and it probably started throttling <laughs> due to low battery or something. Apologies for that. Uh, was it like entire seg segment choppy or? No, you picked off maybe just just above this. All right. So yeah. uh, quickly, uh, the gateway, yeah, the gateway configuration in this section uh, has more examples with additional context. Uh, I try to add an example based on like actual gateway that lives somewhere. Uh, those are like our canonical gateways, one for subdomains, one for paths. So it's much much easier for people to understand those configuration options in that context. Um, and then at the end, uh, there are some like uh, receipts for. Uh, specific uh, types of gateway that people may want to run uh, with both examples and uh, additional uh, context. Uh, it's on the PR, which I will link in notes, uh, in meeting notes, uh, but that's more or less uh, where we are with that. Next step for the subdomain business is uh, having this like test matrix for uh, proxy modes. Because uh, there's like the, the regular HTTP proxy mode, and there's this like HTTP tunnel mode, and we support both. So people will, uh, it will just work because you never know which mode people run. And people, honestly, I did not fully understand the difference until I had to like implement uh, some stuff around that. So I like we need to, we will just implement everything. The the cave up here is like. I don't want to grow uh, the test too much because you need to like 
each, for, for example, if you want to test the request to subdomain, we would have to run that once directly, once, uh, like twice in each uh, proxy mode, and if there's a DNS link resolve in the picture somewhere, that that's like additional permutation. And I want to like collapse the number of permutations, so we'll probably um, write some addition, additional orchestration for those uh, gateway tests. Uh, but so far it looks pretty promising. Uh, the goal is to have it uh, like the surface, to keep the surface small and easy to maintain. Because it's like, even for me, revisiting tests uh, after a week, uh, it's no fun. And if someone will revisit those tests in a few months, I want them to have like at least some fun, like appreciating that someone cares. Um, but yeah. That's about it. Um, any questions? Roboto. Oh man. I hope that nickname does not stick to me. All right. Uh, I don't believe we have any more items this week. Um, we won't be meeting on this call next week because we will be meeting hopefully <laughs> uh, face to face uh so this call will happen in two weeks uh i guess unless we want we have like, any like open topics you want to discuss we can uh just cut it short this week and return you like 20 minutes of your time does it sound good Yep, yeah, that's not my end. Awesome. All right. Uh, see you next week. And see viewers in two weeks. See you. Bye. Thanks, Thanks for. Bye.